All right, my friends, welcome to episode 259. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of episodes of Prof and Dev Play Games. I'm the Professor Larry at Prof Plays Games on Twitter, just blaspheming over here. And over there is Anthony the Dev at Summer Speak on Twitter. How is your hellscape? Um, smoky fog all today. Mm-hmm. But it was What's definitely a fog. Uh, it was just under 200. So it was yeah. better than yesterday. Because nice. yesterday was like 253. Yeah. Um, and tomorrow is supposed to be a little bit better than that. And then it should clear tomorrow night. We're supposed to get some rain. So that will uh, help flush all this away. Yeah, so down here, it was 190 was today. And the fires up in Northern California, the, the headline I read said, we just, we had to wait for the rain. <laughs> like, oh yeah. my God, that's your firefighting strategy. I mean, I know yep. they're doing other things, but like they don't, that sucks. They don't have the manpower, you know, or person yeah. power, I should say. And actually that's kind of the, the, the person power thing. And normally when this thing happens, it's usually not all the West coast States at the same time. So you get right. a lot of yeah. flux between like Oregon firefighters coming down and helping in California or California going up to Oregon and Washington and vice versa. Like it, right. it shifts around. Um, but these all hit in the, about the same three week period. Um, so there's not a whole lot of uh, firefighter manpower on the West coast left. No, no, there is not. And I don't, you know, due to COVID restrictions as well, like getting people from other countries to fly in or whatever is very difficult, obviously. Yeah. Um, it is just the craziest confluence of, I think that's the right word yeah. of, crazy shit happening all at once in in this country yeah. in this coast specifically i guess the president is using air quotes uh is flying in in a couple of days to california somewhere in california he was in reno walk. outside of reno today i heard oh okay um but not in reno he wanted to do it in Re uh a rally oh, in, the in, Re mm -hmm. in reno but mm -hmm. then reno was like no you can't do we, more than 50 you, people uh-huh they were very strict on the risk they're like nope you there's no place in reno that will will host you um Due to the COVID restrictions. Right. So yeah, he just did a thing on some airport about an hour south of Reno. Some random podunk place. I don't know. but I'm surprised he gave in. I thought he would just do it anyways. Yeah, but uh, clearly not. Yeah. So yeah, so, everything's on fire and smoky. So we're inside playing games. Uh, we, we did a mystery room. Uh, that was so you and cool. I some friends. Uh, yeah, over Zoom, just uh, yeah. this company that does mystery rooms. It was built as like an escape room, but that wasn't really an escape room. I don't no, know. it's a it's a a live, almost LARPish point and click adventure game. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, we we started off very poorly and ended up being one of the fastest teams that have done it. So we're amazing. Um, and then speaking of other games, this last week was a crazy week for fucking news because of the leaks for the Xbox yeah. Series S, which Labor Day, you know, the seventh Labor Day evening, um, about 9 p.m., there starts to be leaks from Brad Sams from Therat and showing the S and the price and what it looks like, which is like this weird speaker looking thing. And then Microsoft kind of like tweets a meme, with like a side eye little yeah. puppet monkey. And then at 12.03 a.m. on the 8th they just drop it yep here it is <laughs> yeah they drop everything they're just like here <laughs> fine it all leaked here here's all the info um, oh man which is originally supposed to be this week is when they were supposed right. to announce it but clearly they were ready and just like fine there's no reason to like it's out there we just got to roll with it at this point um well and the, the presentation that's supposed to happen this week also leaked yesterday yeah i saw that and i didn't watch it but i saw i that did it I did, and I'm really glad that the leaks happened this last week because it was. I think it was more exciting. The, the okay. presentation this coming week is kind of like people sitting in like a room, doing these kind of cozy interviews, and it's very slow. And it's just like this was sexier and way more exciting. I'm sure. Yeah. So. Um. So I mean, yeah. The the X. Well, X and S. There's two Xboxes now. God, their naming sucks. Hate it. <laughs> I heard um, someone explain how it's not that confusing because it aligns with how smartphones are with the, you know, the iPhone S, iPhone X. And I was like, no, it's fucking confusing. Uh, Series yeah. X versus X1, Xbox One X. There was a news article that says that the Series S won't have the Xbox One X enhancements. And I just heard X enhancements. And I was like, I don't understand what this means. Oh, they meant the last generation, current generation enhancements for old games. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sure. There's... A little bit of that with the 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 uh, smartphone market, Apple somewhat. Although Apple stuck to for the longest time actual just numeric numeric additions with right. every once in a while, like 
an iPhone SE. Um, or just little offshoots, but the main line has stayed. Honestly, I think they're up to the 11 just came out. The 12 is rumored to come potentially be announced in a couple weeks. That's why I thought they were um, still doing numbers. They do. They generally do numbers as their main phones. They just do these little side ones. Like I have an, an iPhone. I've now had two iPhone SEs, two different phones, though. I had the original SE back in four or five years ago, and I just mm -hmm. got a new iPhone SE, which is uh, the 2020 SE or whatever they call it. Um, mm -hmm. But they're not the main phones. They're like, here, here's like a, a cheaper version. It, it has slightly different parts, a different form factor compared to what the latest version is. I don't know. But they're like, they aren't the main phones. They're just like, here's a different, slightly different one. Um, and they don't do it that often. Maybe. So yeah, they tend to keep their numeric numbers going, honestly, a lot like Sony. <laughs> where right. when you think about it, you had even the, like, let's go back to the PS2. You had the original PS2, and then you had a PS2 Slim, um, PS3, and you had a couple versions of the PS3. But they don't really have a ton of extra names. They're not... They're clearly denoting which is the next generation when it happens. Yeah, right. PS4 um, Pro is not not confusing. No, you're like it's a PS4. I don't I, I necessarily need to know what Pro stands for, but it's different than that one that's just called PS4. Right. I sort of wish when Xbox decided they couldn't be the Xbox Two against the PS3, if they had just said Xbox Three, <laughs> just skip yeah. it all together, because then we'd be on the five. But you know, whatever. Uh, naming convention aside, it was. Yeah. I think the biggest news that was like the shocking thing for me was the two ninety nine price point yeah. and the payment plans, which the payment plans are not new. They they were happening. They're happening now for the Xbox One X. I mean, it happened for a while. Yeah. But the idea of they've already have the Game Pass. So put in your head, here's a subscription every month to play games like the Netflix of games or whatever. Instead of talking about sticker price, we're going to talk about twenty five dollars a month or thirty five dollars a month. Yep. And that in this economy sounds a lot more palatable, I think. It does, probably for a lot of people. Um, I bet a lot of people will use it, and I wouldn't. I don't like... I can't imagine financing a console. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't even finance my phone. But I'm in a place where I don't need to. Right. And so I'm sure this will be enticing for a number of people because it doesn't have any interest rate. Um, it includes Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. So that's $15 out of the price right there is Game Pass which you'd be paying monthly anyway if you wanted it. So Right, and that's the thing that, that why this is, like I'm not, was not considering an Xbox this new generation, and I'm probably still not, but the idea that for an extra 10 bucks a month, I could get the tiny S yeah. underneath my TV, like 10 bucks a month, that's pretty good. Like I would it's consider enticing. financing it. Not, yeah. I mean, I can, I can just buy it out right now, but I don't want to. <laughs> but yeah. for 10 bucks a month more, it, it almost becomes a why not. Um, but then I'm yeah. like, okay, if it's, if it's 10 bucks a month more, well, then if I paid an extra 10 bucks on top of that, so 20 bucks more a month, I could have the X, which would be a fucking screaming console. And I was like, well, yeah. okay, stop. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there's all that. And that's, that is 100% a great a great value there. And I, I looked, thought about it. I was like, okay, let's just say I wanted to have an Xbox. I, I would totally just do the 10 bucks. That'd be fine. The, the key thing is there, I'm like, why would I pay... For an Xbox, when I can just play all the games on my computer, <laughs> um, yeah, it's yeah. remarkable. I'm like that. That's the only thing that stops me from even considering even getting the S at the price. The price is great for it. It puts it in the same category as the Switch as being like I have a primary console, mm -hmm. which would probably be a PS5 at this point. But why not have this other one? Like eventually, I could I could get this digital version. Um, but I have a computer that's going to run all those games anyway. Um, good yeah, or but better than that will actually run them so Correct. and and i keep I have been thinking about that as well in terms of uh, first of all like it it caused me to turn my head toward xbox when i wasn't going yeah. to and i probably still won't but maybe i will so there are people who are probably more inclined yeah. to but we're probably still saying no who have turned their head even more and said now i'm definitely doing it yep i um, believe that so i think they've shifted people toward them um, but also that that question about the games like game pass specifically you're right like any of those games on game pass i can play on my computer better than what's going to be on the xbox one s um yeah. or god damn it i just did it xbox series yes. s yeah um but the i have a large catalog of xbox games that are not on game pass um which i don't think you do so i mean access... i still i still technically have my 360 so oh you do oh, okay yeah i never but got rid of that have... console i could is plug it, it digital back in. though no i no, no, all I mean, my th did you buy did i buy what Sorry. 
digital. Did you buy games mostly digital or disc for disc 360? 360. I still right. have all so my 360 really discs. Yeah. yeah. There's like no it I don't have digital games in the Xbox ecosystem. Right, that's what I I'm have, getting at. I have physical games. Right. So why the the S doesn't do me any good. The exactly. X would if I wanted to play it on the X. Like, but so yeah, for someone maybe like you who has a lot of digital content, um, mm-hmm. it could be worth it if you felt like you needed a new console to play that digital content. Exactly. Exactly. And and for me, I have a One S. Right. Well, I have a One S. My in laws are using have, it, and yeah. I probably won't get it back. <laughs> so um, again, it just becomes like a why not for ten bucks a month more because I'm yeah. already paying for Ultimate. Um, and I just we'll see where I land on that. Yeah. Um, but that's, that was just like, it was super surprising to me considering what's still in that box. I know that the RAM is less and I know the hard drive is less and so, the, the, f- yeah, the it's, CPU it's, is underclocked or whatever. It's not the CPU. CPU is the same between the well, two. I thought, it was, I thought it was lower, same CPU, but I thought it was lower. Um, GPU. No, no, no. I, I, I know that. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But I thought that the CPU was running at a lower, um, it was like 3.4 instead of 3.8 or something like that. I have to check. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I watched Digital Foundry and they were talking about it. Mm-hmm. Um, there it is. Tech specs. Um, let's see. It's a. They're both eight core, running at. Th- uh, it's a couple hundred megahertz. Yeah. Right. So it's not too much, but it's a little bit. But yeah, the GPU is where the big difference is. The big difference. Yeah, because they wanted to keep. I can guarantee that they wanted to keep the CPUs roughly the same, because in development. That that's one thing. You, your game is going to use a certain amount, need to do a certain amount of computation in a in a frame. Um, that is not GPU. It is just like, hey, I need to do mathematical calculations, if statements, whatever is coded in there, logic, and that runs on the CPU. If you start saying, hey, the CPU in the S is dramatically different than the X, that makes developers go, well, shit. I guess right. I have to make my game. I have to hold my game back so it runs on the S, and I cannot take. Um, I can't even conceive of using the extra cycles of the the X. There's no reason to because it has to run on both. Um, right. And you can't well, scale that graphics. You can scale. Well, and they still have to hit the Xbox One right now. You know, like with Halo Five or Six or whatever. Well, some of the games, games, yeah, currently, yes. Um, currently, exactly. But and if it's, it's but if it is just a series, if it's just like, hey, this only is a Series X game, then yeah, um, it it helps there. Uh, and the GPU is definitely the thing to to pull back on because it's just like, all right, you can scale the number of effects on screen, you can scale texture resolution, you can scale mm-hmm. um, just general resolution, frame rate, stuff like that. Um, without well, kind of, impacting the, the like gameplay when it feels kind of smart to have a, a cheaper box like this that's basically i know it can do 1440p but basically it's targeting 1080p for it's the t- half of the half of the market who still doesn't have a 4k monitor who or tv screen you know um there are still a number of people who might want to have next gen but don't have that fancy tv yet so why pay the extra yeah. i guess um, although it's nice that this upscales and such yeah yeah um i mean i only have a 1080p tv and monitors and i don't see myself getting a 4k tv anytime soon that's um, kind of what i'm talking about right like so it's, it's and for someone like me who has a 4k tv and if i stand you know in the spot where it matters like it, i can tell like horizon looks amazing but for the most part i sit further back so it doesn't fucking matter you know to me i don't really notice like if if you told me oh that's 1440p or that's 4k i, I don't know if i would really know as opposed yeah. to frame rate frame rate is something i can notice better oh yeah yeah, especially that's 144 it. frames. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think they chose correctly in being like, hey, here's a, a cheap box, 300 bucks that I think will be pretty enticing to a lot of people. Um, I don't think there's really a big any really huge negatives there. It's just that that's the entry level. And maybe those people get less satisfied with it if they eventually then upgrade to a 4k tv or anything maybe they won't even notice um i don't think they'd notice yeah. the thing that's interesting about the price too is so it's 299 if you do the financing it actually works out to be 240 because you yeah. save 60 bucks over so then 240 and then tack on it's coming with a controller obviously uh, which is yep. you know brings it down to like 180 because i wanted to get an xbox series s or whatever x controller for my pc to have the usb charging um the you know USB C yeah. excuse me as opposed to the mini um so it's just like i was going to spend that anyways on a new controller 
Like it just keeps bringing the price down. It's just like mm, maybe I don't know. But um, what do you think about the design? That black I like it. Girl? I like it a lot more than the the Series X. Quite a bit. Yeah, more. just that brutal. I like it. That black it's just, box. I just like that it's it's small. Yeah, it has the big vent on top uh, that does make it look like a speaker. <laughs> but this one can be laid on its side pretty easily and it's just hidden away in a in a cabinet. Um, in terms of cooling. You know, the PS5 looks, I, I think the PS5 looks fucking weird, um, but it's yeah. built for cooling. So it's fine as long as the function is working. The, the cooling on this, because it's basically this small white box, do you think that we're going to have any heating issues on this? Or do you I don't think know. That that's I, I was trying to get a good, because I mean, that big top piece is where it's pretty sure that's where it's venting out from. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I couldn't, I was trying to get a good picture of like where it vents in. Because it looks like. Oh, it's on the side. It's so if you're Mm. sitting it upright and then like it looks like a speaker, there's uh, the entire, I guess if it's laying over, it's the right hand side of it is a vent as well. So it's sucking, sucking air in from the side and venting it out the top Mm -hmm. um, if it's laying on its side. Um, Is that right? Or is it sucking air in? If it's vertical, is it sucking in from the side? That looks like it's sucking in the speaker thing because there's like Speak- the fan in that in that third picture. If you see like the blowout, looks like there's a fan there. There right is, the- so it's blowing out the side. Okay, so it sucks it. So one, don't put anything on top of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then it blows out the vents out the side or top. Um, interesting. Okay. Oh, actually, it looks like it might have vents on the bottom too. So don't put it on its bottom. Uh, it, not not the bottom. I mean, if it, if it's vertical, it still has a grate on the on the bottom as well. Hmm. So basically, both both ends are ventilation as well. So, and I, honestly, the GPU is running slow slow enough now, much lower that I have feeling heating is not going to be as much of an issue. Yeah. Um, there's there's been conversation about the 512 gigabyte uh, SSD, and then. You know, people talking about you're going to have to juggle, not, can't put a lot of games yeah. on there. But then people talking about um, the idea that moving into next gen might mean that game sizes will be smaller. No. And I was wondering, okay, what you thought about that. <laughs> no. <laughs> how, okay. how much is the new Call of Duty? Call of Duty. Oh, God, it's like 110 megs or something, or gigs or something. Uh, is it Black Ops Cold War? Yep. COD Ops Cold Disc space 100 gigabytes yeah that's fucking insane and no that they're not going to get smaller that's that's what you're getting at whenever you start talking about like 4k textures and everything this is what you're getting you're getting games that are 100 to 150 um i bet if so cyberpunk is gonna have uh i'm sure a high res texture pack you can download mm-hmm, and i'm mm-hmm. sure it's gonna push an extra like 60 or 70 gigabytes <laughs> um from above whatever it currently is so uh yeah space is going to be an issue you're going to be juggling pretty quickly on if you're playing these triple a games yeah and it's, it's kind of nice that it has a setup where like a you know a, i think it's a usb3 um for an external hard drive like a regular one like we have that you can put your xbox one or older generation xbox games on and play off of those um or have uh the whatever you want to even the xbox series s or x games that you just load back onto the sd ssd and load games off the ssd onto the hd hdd so you kind of like juggle back and forth there as opposed to from the cloud and back um that's interesting yeah i mean sony's doing the same thing yeah yeah. Yeah, they both are right yeah they're just like uh you're gonna have to do some juggling uh unfortunately um and that's fine if I, ha- I don't the thing that i don't like is um deleting what i've downloaded and having to download again i'd rather keep it you know get like a yeah. four terabyte or six terabyte external um and just and then offload just, it exactly totally um so the, the 512 doesn't really it's not really that scary for me but it is small and there is rumors that there's a seagate expansion for the back slot that you can put a one terabyte in that's going to cost based on the nvme architecture i guess like 220 for yeah. that expansion it's, pr- it's the pr- it's the proprietary one that they yeah, use yeah. um it's like a psv the shit yep <laughs> um but that's a, that's the price of the whole fucking console yep so yep I mean, that doesn't seem feasible uh i mean it's the same it's i assume it's the exact same card that the the series x uses when they showed that off where the right. it's a little expansion slot um mm-hmm. yeah same one. It's, the, it's the same thing and yep. so nothing special there if you, if you want uh 
your your hot loading and quick loading of games uh that's where they need to be and it's gonna cost you so it it sucks but it's true yeah um but it seems like in general xbox kind of wowed people this week it was definitely the most positive xbox reaction i've seen in many many months yeah and honestly i think it's mostly for because of the series s coming out totally everyone was like okay series x cool whatever but the series s and the price made people go oh okay we'll take notice of that um Mm -hmm. so we'll see Uh, i'm gonna wait of course a little bit um and i'll make my choice if i ever want to get one probably sometime next year but I said every yeah. game, every game that I might even want to play on it, and I'll just play on my PC right now. Right. So I don't yeah, think I don't that's going to change. I don't think. Nah, I don't think it makes a lot of sense for you for sure. Yeah. Um, but this does put a thing uh, fire to Sony's uh, feet, and they have a thing this week. Yeah. Do you think it is going to cause any change in what they were planning to do in terms of price, or is that? I've heard it? rumors that they did, but really, we'll, I yeah. guess we'll never know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like. Maybe it did. Maybe it didn't. Um, maybe in years we'll know. And someone will talk yeah. about it. But Jason Schreier was some article. Yeah, there. exactly. Uh, as right, it could. There's no. It's conceivable that it could change the price. Where they're like, oh, okay, they went with four ninety nine. Um, let's match that on our top end, and they went with two ninety nine on the S. I don't think the digital edition will be two ninety nine. I don't either. Um, it, because they Sony has Sony's already been clear that the digital edition is the exact same internals right? as the non-digital edition, the just normal PS5. The digital edition just doesn't have a disk drive. Like, it's the same CPU, the same GPU. Um, everything's the same. So I don't think they could cut price down to $299. Um, I, don't, I don't think so either. That'd be too much of a loss. But I, $399, I could see. I could see. I, $399 seems super likely to me, and I could possibly see if they really wanted to dig going to $349 just because they'd make it up, possibly in the fact that you're not buying discs or used games. You're buying from PSN. Yeah. But, but I think I, the, there's I there's, there's something to be said there where they, they can easily say and be like, well, we have these two models. Our cheaper model might be 100 bucks more than Xbox, but you're getting the same power. You're, right, you're not you're model. not sacrificing anything from a, a performance standpoint with that right. with that one, which is a pretty. St- it at least gives the reason why there is value to it. Um, and right, you just got to nail sure. that message and make it very yeah. clear. Yeah, but I think that's I think that's a compelling message for sure. And I think yeah. that to to release a console of that caliber and that power at the same price point as the PS4 is a value. I think. Yeah, like I've I've been saying all along to to you guys on our group chat. Um, considering the lane, because I have so much to play on my PS4 and PC that I can wait, um, and that a you know a five ninety nine price point would be nope, definitely yeah. definitely waiting. Four ninety nine would be maybe, but probably going to wait. And a three ninety nine would be uh, I'm jumping in on day one. So we'll see. And I and I agree. The only problem is is I don't want a digital edition. Yeah, I have I, discs. I have my discs, and I have a lot of games for the PS4 that I want to play that are on disc. Yeah. And while I will still have the PS4 around, I still think they'll. I still like having some physical media. So yeah, um, yeah. I still I still haven't decided simply because I would say eighty percent of my PS4 games are digital. I do have twenty percent their disc, um, and I'm keeping my Pro. So if I can't move those games up to the PS5, I don't know if I will. I don't know yeah. if it'll matter as much to me because I have so many other things to bring up to the PS5 and it'll give me a reason to keep the Pro around for sure. Um, it just depends on how, how low, like if it's 350, I'm definitely getting digital. I just, I think that that's price true. point. Um, but if it's, you know, if it's 400 or 450 and then, then I'll probably go for the, the disc. Yeah. I don't think they're going to do the fifties thing. You don't think so? No, I think it will be 400 and 500. The 50 stuff will be, they can do price drops later. Uh, that's true. That's true. They, and that's actually one of the things with the two ninety nine thing. Say I another year and a half, do they drop it to two fifty? Yeah. I. It's cool that it's at three hundred, but there's definitely a point where you're like, do you, are you potentially undercutting in the end some of the the room you have to drop price? Um, mm-hmm. And what happens if you start dropping the Series X down more and start bridging that? So if it drops to four hundred, that's three hundred for the low, four hundred for this X. You have to kind of have to keep that price differential there Mm -hmm. um or drop or say hey the s is going away now and the x is now at a price point that 
they're all X. Maybe they introduce a uh, mid cycle revision again. That's possible. Actually, what would they, what would they call that now? Cause they called the <sighs> mid cycle one and X, <laughs> uh, series, series X two, two squared. Oh man. yeah. Oh man. No. Yeah. Um, so why don't why we're on the topic of PS5? So you're you're basically three ninety nine, four ninety nine, and that's yeah. that's where I am too. Um, what else do you think is going to be in the presentation? Because they said they're going to focus on games. They said that last time when they announced the console. So we're definitely getting UI and you know price and date. Um, and there's rumors now about Final Fantasy sixteen. Who knows if those are true or not? But Seriously, you haven't seen that? No. There's there's some pretty significant and credible rumors that. Uh, the the PS5 uh, presentation on Wednesday is going to have a reveal of uh, Final Fantasy 16. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you know who knows if it really will or not, but it seems there seems to be some there's some smoke, so there might be some fire. I hate to I should not have used that in this in this in this time. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh. um, but what do you think? What game wise do you think they're going to do? Uh, more Spider Man, Miles. Mm-hmm. Um, they've done a bunch with Ratchet and Clank, so I don't think we'll see that much this time maybe just in a scissor reel um i'm trying to think of other things that we haven't seen they said it's first party right or checking back in maybe it's not all first party i don't know if i heard that okay i don't know then i feel like everything's been shown i mean they're not going to show horizon anymore like it's years away yeah it's um, too far away right and it's like yeah you show you, you showed your trailer for that uh there's not going to be anything incredibly new there um, what other studios do they have working on things? I mean, I guess there could be a significant like chunk of third party games that they're showing that are launch window games. And I don't know what yeah. those will be exactly, but I'm sure that they have deals with certain um, third parties for exclusivity window or uh, DLC co-marketing. I think COD bring it up for, I think call of duty this year is doing a PlayStation. Mm hmm. Um, co-marketing so i wouldn't be surprised if you see something on um the next call of duty when what what it will be on the playstation environment and what you get um but i don't know new stuff really god i think that would be the most beneficial for them in a counterpoint to microsoft which is basically price and services to just say here are the five launch games or whatever you yeah know, actually just show our games i just don't mm-hmm. know what those are i don't know i don't know either you know, I, you know, if they can bring Ratchet, Ratchet up to like December or something and just say, this is our December yeah. game, this is our November game, just like, here's the game, 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 game. That's, you know, I think having the focus of this by saying this is a game's presentation just keeps hammering that point home because it is exciting that the Xbox Series S is so cheap and you can get it on a payment plan or whatever. But what new games are you going to play on that that are not third party games you can play anywhere? Yeah. I so. mean, you're not you're not playing Halo anymore. You're not playing Halo Infinite, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, so I think that I think they're they're going to have one banger. So if it, for me, it's not Final Fantasy 16, simply because I think when they had first announced Final Fantasy what 15, it was years until it came out. Um, uh, yeah, so. and actually, anything I would not expect Final Fantasy 16 to be a launch title, even if it's shown. If this is the first time they're showing it, it's probably years out. From releasing. That's, what I'm, that's what I'm getting to is like, that's not super exciting because, okay, it, I know it exists. I know it's coming out. That's not news. Um, so to show it is like, okay, cool. This will be out in three years. Um, Although I will say, I don't know if it actually exists. Oh, really? You think <laughs> at this point, I've just been like, they, they put 15 out and then that lasted for a while. And the fact that there's been like nothing for years of official, like, Hey, we're working on another final fantasy has made me like, Maybe they stopped for a long time, like a really long time. They do. They're going to do these remakes with seven for a while um, and not worry about making 16 or whatever they want to call it. Well, I guess that makes it a little more exciting than if people are thinking they uh, have to put it on the shelf. You know? I really just thought they were going to focus on the seven remakes for at least another few years um, mm-hmm. and give themselves time internally to kind of reevaluate what a mainline Final Fantasy is now. Um, so I think 15 sold really well in the end, but it is kind of a disappointment, um, and pretty critically panned, um, overall. That's the one Final Fantasy that I've played to completion. (laughs) It's a beautiful game to play. There's a lot of really cool stuff and it's fun to play. It's just, its story was terrible. Yes. Um, so there's this part of me that just thought they would be just 
hey, we can we can mine our old ones that people love for a while while we figure out what comes next. Mm-hmm. Um, and let let a team, maybe a small team, work on the next Final Fantasy for a very long time, just iterating and trying and ideas and prototyping and mm-hmm. finding that core again. Um, but maybe not. Maybe they're like, bring it, we're doing 16. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, other than that, I just can't really think of what else... Um... I think maybe bug snacks. We're going to see more yeah, bug snacks. We sure are. We will see bug snacks and that's going to be a, a launch window or a launch game. Who knows? <laughs> um, you know, and, and just other like high caliber indie games, perhaps maybe, maybe we'll see silk song. Probably not. No, <laughs> Oh man, that'd be great. If they said, uh, yeah, hollow Knight silk song is launching day and date with PS five and only on PS five. That would be, I would definitely want in yeah. <laughs> day one. Yeah. I don't, Completely. I'm trying to look at lists of if anything out there is like, I haven't I forgotten something? And it's like, no. I mean, Bloodborne two. You know, like I mean, that could be a thing. That totally could be a thing. It's it's kind of the right time of year for that yeah. kind of moody sort of game to be like. I mean, that would be nuts, and that would be. I think that would not happen at all because uh, From is working on Elden Ring, and maybe Elden Ring. Maybe that'll be brought <laughs> Don't up. Don't get your hopes like, up. It's fucking vaporware. Yeah. <laughs> um, who knows? I don't know. It's, Maybe I Elden Ring is Bloodborne too. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, if they're like Elden Ring comes out November exclusively on PS5 or something like that. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, with all of them, like, what's the launch game that is the enticing thing for me? And that, so far, there's not. There hasn't Miles been a Browns lot. Does not do it for me. I'm. I'm tr- yeah. Spider Man's fine, but I was trying to think of the PS4. What my if there was any huge launch titles I got for it, I think I mean, so. I bought it. I bought it for Destiny. I got. I sucked in that. Yeah. Pretty quickly. Um, that's when I came on with PS4. So that's not even a you know a first party. That game. was a year later, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. I didn't buy it at launch. I was not I, into gaming when it launched. I didn't even know about it. And that was a year later. Dragon Age Inquisition was a year later. Um, hmm. I mean, I bought games when it first came out. I'm trying to think. I mean, I got. Kill zone just because it looked pretty. I wanted to show off, watch the pretty, the pretty graphics. Um, How far did you get in that game? Not far. Yeah, me too. I didn't re- enjoy it very much. Yeah, I mean, it, it it was a fine FPS, but nothing, nothing great. Um, PS4 launch titles. What were they? I'm actually Resogun. <laughs> oh, Resogun was badass. God, I, I enjoyed really Resogun, like Resogun, which is funny to say because it was like what ten bucks or something. Um. Oh, I got Assassin's... I had Black Flag on it when it oh, first yeah. came out. I was really enjoying Black Flag on the PS4. And not that it wasn't on the PS3, but it was very pretty on the PS4. Um, buh, 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 buh. I had Killzone. I had AC Black Flag, Resogun. Um, oh, Knack. I got Knack. We're getting Knack. I got. Uh, I think I had Battlefield as well. Battlefield 4 at the time, because, I mean, oh, yeah. I was mm-hmm. working for EA. I could get all these games cheap. Um, So I was like, give me... All your non-sports PS4 launch titles. Because <laughs> I just want some games. Um, but yeah, it had a pretty lackluster launch lineup, honestly. Not sure why I got it at launch. Looking back, I could have waited a year and been just fine. It's like FOMO or like... Oh, okay, I, yeah, I, just a lot of reasons for the PS4. Yeah. I, um, the PS5, I You did, you I did think... wait a year on the PS4. But when it launched, I wasn't in games. Like, I didn't exactly. get any games until... Um, 2000 april of 2014 yeah is when i got a wii u um that's because i saw that there was a new donkey kong game donkey oh, there kong you country go. that was my system seller um but but uh in terms of ps5 the the idea with the pro where you could make a step up and play your games better better resolution better performance whatever um but stepping up into a five where you can play your games where your fucking ps4 doesn't sound like it's about to explode yeah um would be something <laughs> you know yeah. and just the the load times is enticing for for people i think who don't have a you know an ssd on their pc you know who are experiencing that in other ways i think those two things are compelling even if the the launch library is not there yeah so i i feel like we could wait until you know next march and not have missed any significant game yeah i think that's where i'm at with it and the fact also because it's gonna probably be very hard to get a hold of one mm-hmm. if for whatever reason i can't because I'm sleeping or I'm not near my phone or anything, I don't notice that pre-orders go up right. until later. I'm not going to be broken up if I. It's just like okay, there's no way I'm getting one for a couple months. It's like yeah, and it's like fine, I'll wait. Like, and that's where I've landed too. Where I'm just I'm, if I'm 
depending on the price on Wednesday, I decide I'm in. If I can't get it because of the, you know supply or whatever, I miss my window like you. I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. I'll get yeah. it eventually. I have a lot to play on my PS4 with my new fancy AIM controller. <laughs> so I don't yeah. want to give that up quite yet. So, oh. Um. Well, we are getting kind of late, so why yeah. don't we quickly go through Ubisoft Forward if there was anything there that caught your eye? Uh, just uh, Odyssey of the Wild. Yes, that's exactly the only thing that caught my eye, too. <laughs> um, what the fuck, man? This game looks funny as shit. I hope it like maintains that, but it looks really funny. Yeah. What is it? Actual name? Phoenix? Uh, Immortals Phoenix Rising. Rising. Um, yeah, um, and it does look very inspired by breath of the wild um have you watched gameplay videos like yeah f- like oh, jesus christ there's like magnesis yeah uh, there are shrines um yeah it's breath i of the will wild. say their puzzles seem a bit more involved from oh, yeah. what i've seen mm-hmm. than breath of the wild puzzles a lot of them right um which is cool like i appreciate like these multi-step uh puzzles and everything um well, even like multi-step shrines like it's yeah. not just like one little focus thing and you get out yeah. it's like pretty intense pretty involved i mean so, I mean, I feel like they were like, okay, we make this, like anything that's somewhat of a fast follow, I wouldn't call it a fast follow, they took Breath of the Wild as their, like, base, and then they were like, what things can we tweak to make this our own? Um, and I think they've tweaked combat, and they've tweaked puzzles. The rest yeah. seems roughly the same, and like an upgrade system. Um, but they're not really looking to change the core concepts that even made breath of the wild the exploration and the way the world's presented even the the look they're keeping the climb animation looks almost exactly the same it looks the same even when they pan the camera around i'm like this is yeah. exactly from that trailer they they did this on very much on purpose uh-huh <laughs> um which i'm fine with and you know yeah. and if the weapons don't degrade which i know pissed off a lot of people didn't really bother me um that would be a big plus as well like this this turned into a probably a day one purchase um i think this is going to be a really exciting game to play december 3rd uh, i believe december december 3rd yep i should be nowhere near the end of cyberpunk at that point so maybe nope. that's the only thing that will hold me off from buying it but, uh, um, but you also have hyrule warriors oh god damn it you're right uh, that's what hold, calamity. that's what holds me off from getting this i'm like i am interested right. in it you're right but i i'm probably not getting this game before january february yeah you're right um and it's it's so well, we'll get to that one, what we're playing, why yeah. Age of Calamity is such a good time for timing yeah. for me. But yeah, so Immortals looks great. Um, the gameplay is awesome. Finally, we got uh, Prince of Persia news, Sands of Time remake, which yep, I never it, played, but I'm sure people are excited. Uh, they are, I'm sure. Uh, I don't think it looks great. I don't I think, think anyone likes it looks great. I think it, <laughs> I was like, really? You're calling this a remake? I, I feel like the remake name has now been uh, changed after you see Final Fantasy VII remake. Like, oh yeah, that's true. Um, if anything, this is like a a remaster at best. You're not mm-hmm. really remaking the game that much. Like, I don't know. I was looking. I was like, "Come on, guys, you can do better than this." If you're remaking the game, um, so I don't know. Um, it was not nearly as exciting as I wanted it to be. So, yeah. um, it's fine. We'll move on from there. Right. Other than that, nothing else really stood out to me. No. So. Um, we'll be getting some good games from them. Oh, the other thing that stood out, I guess I should say, is that fucking Ubisoft did it again. They put out a freaking independent video that said, we're looking in, you know, we've made some mistakes with our, you know, um, anti-Black Lives Matter content and the the mobile game we had and sexual harassment. We're going to do better. And they're like, why didn't you just put it in the conference? Just like last time they didn't put it in the conference. Yeah. Like, oh, we just didn't have time to do it. Like, yeah, you did. And that's what you said last time. And then their social media team said, oh, we're, we're going to make sure it's attached to all the VODs. It is not attached to the VODs. Um, they very much, from marketing-wise, a lot of eyes are going to be on this that don't really know about those things. And they didn't want to like let them know about those things. And it's just Ubisoft is disappointing me in terms of their response to these issues recently. Yeah, they really are. Um, it's definitely put a, a damper on my enthusiasm for the games overall. Yeah, they they've recently i mean not recently for a long time it's been my favorite developer and this year i'm kind of like you know i'm i decided not to do valhalla i'm gonna do cyberpunk instead there's just a lot of the stuff that's kind of soured me on their games right now yeah. even though immortals looks so good i, I don't know if yeah. i can hold off on that one so no, you'll i probably be too busy will playing other games, other games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah i probably will to be playing other games yeah um speaking of other games what have you been playing do i need to say it uh, just for the the benefit uh, of the well, listeners. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I had some friends that were like, "Hey, 
you should check out Final Fantasy XIV again. I know you haven't done it in years, and you didn't get that far, but really, it's changed a lot. You should try it. Um, and I did. And, yep, I'm uh, down the rabbit hole of uh, an MMO and Final Fantasy XIV, <laughs> and it's great, kind of. Um, actually, I'm having a blast. It's it's a ton of fun. Um, I've heard it's good. It is good. It's slow, I will say, from the start. You do have to push through a bit before it kind of, I guess, story-wise starts picking up, and then class-wise starts picking up. You get enough abilities to start making your classes feel um, more interesting, and you're doing more interesting rotations. Um, I picked to play a Conjurer, which turns into White Mage. I was like, ah, if I'm going to do this, I want to I want to be able to get groups instantly. And I have been. <laughs> if I want to wow. do any kind of dungeon, I'm like, uh, they they call him uh, uh, the the dungeon finder. I just go in. I'm like, I want to do this one right now, and within a second, it pops up that you have a party. Holy shit! Wow. Yeah, like as a healer, you don't have to wait like at all. Um, and it's pretty. I'm like healing, healing at especially these lower dungeons is trivial as long mm-hmm. as you know what you're doing. It's like fine, target the tank, keep them topped off, done. Don't stand in things that cause damage. <laughs> don't draw aggro. Um, just basic MMO stuff. So I'm like, cool, I can do that. I can sit and I can press the buttons to heal a person. Sweet. Uh, so, but it, it's a fun game. It's, it still looks really good um, for even how old it is. It just has a really good art style that I think even holds up better than WoW. I think WoW is getting looking a little long in the tooth there. Because um, mm-hmm. they even have an expansion coming out next month. Yeah, Shadowlands. Yeah, um, which, oh my god, am I getting confused, because the latest Final Fantasy expansion is Shadowbringers. Uh, f- for 14? Yeah, 14, mm. which came out this year already. It's called Shadowbringers, and then WoW is Shadowlands. Um, so I am get I always get confused. I'm like, what should I be calling this thing? Um, I will also say I, I was enticed to 14 because they changed. All I had to do was re-up my subscription. Um and now I have the first expansion as well. And all the thought, content from that first expansion, I can go to level 60 without having to buy anything else. I just needed my subscription turned back on. I thought for some reason that the the story content was free up to like Heaven's Ward or through Heaven's Ward or something. Heaven's, that's it. Through that. The first expansion. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. And you can, have, you can use all the class, um, the jobs and classes that they introduced in that expansion. And if you want to go to like the whole thing, because there's two. Stormblood and then Shadowbringers. All you have to do is buy Shadowbringers and you get all the... You don't have to buy each expansion anymore, I'm saying. You mm-hmm. only have to buy the latest expansion and you get all the other ones. Um, and it's like 15 bucks a month, right? You're paying? Yep, 15 bucks yeah. right now. And I can just right. turn it off whenever. So when, when you're done, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. It, it's fun. It, it's good for an MMO. Um, clearly expansive, has been around for a while. Main story is uh, becoming more engaging as I go now. Final Fantasy fourteen having come out before fifteen, obviously, and then still having legs long after fifteen is stopped is so interesting. Uh, I guess we'll just go to what you've been playing. Yes, why don't we do that? Um, so what I've been playing this week, obviously, is still Origami King. We have gotten into the fifth world, which is up in the sky. Bowser's castle has fallen on this place called Shangri Spa, which is where toads go to relax in hot springs. So we're exploring the hot springs and going to fight the fifth stationary boss, which is a pair of scissors. Um, and it's just great. Fucking game is great. Oops, I punched my microphone because um, I'm so enthusiastic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the people keep complaining about the battles, obviously, and everyone else has lots of praise for every other part of the game. I think the battles were fine. They don't bother me if they're not that exciting either. Um, but just my daughter's delight in all the characters and then play acting all the characters afterwards is so cool. Like where Kamek is, um, with us right now as a companion and she knows him from the Yoshi game. So we made like a paper mache, not paper mache, paper craft, uh, Kamek. We call, she calls him the magician and okay. we play them every once in a while. And now that he's joined our party, she's so excited that she knows who he is. And she's like playing with the paper craft, uh, Kamek now. And just like, he's her best buddy now. And she hasn't forgotten about Bobby the bomb, but, uh, Kamek is definitely there right now. Uh, and it's just, it's so cool. And she's getting so into those characters. Um, so played that. Um, and then the, the other thing that's been interesting this week is the day that we learned about age of calamity. Uh, my daughter was playing with the breath of the wild, uh, Zelda and link amiibo. And she was like, can I see the game Breath of the Wild? 
And I was like, sure. So I turned on Breath of the Wild. Like at the beginning, there's no battling, you know, just running yeah. around the plateau basically and showing her things like anything you can see, you can go to. And she was so excited. And she's like, go to that mountain. And I showed her like Rivali's little, um, like the, 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 um, bird flying in the air where yeah. Rivali's at in Rito village. And she wanted to go there. I'm like, uh, okay, we can't, but sure. I'll go. And you get to the edge of the plateau and jump off and die. She's like, no, okay, let's just stay on the plateau. And we, you know, met the old man and we're just crawling around different things. And, um, so she was like, super into it and I you turned it off after our screen time was over. And then I kind of looked around YouTube and found basically all the cutscenes from Breath of the Wild put together, and I previewed it. And there's zero battling. There's none. Um, it's just the story. There's some scary moments with like the Shadow Blight and Walker yeah. Blight Ganon or whatever. But we watched the whole on my birthday. We watched the whole thing straight, an hour and forty-five minutes. But we've never done. I was just like, you know, it's my birthday. I want to do have this moment with my daughter. I'm going to do this, and just I'm going to do it as long as she wants to. And she was just glued to it, like wanting to know who all the characters were, just like. Urbosa, which she calls Rabosa, and Mifa, and Daruk, and Rivali, and she's just like so into the characters. We've already watched the movie twice now. <laughs> watched on my birthday, watched the whole thing, and then since then we watched. You know, her screen time is typically thirty minutes, so you yeah. watch it in thirty minute chunks. Um, and she, it's so interesting because she's so into that story and watching it all together in one piece. Like the Breath of the Wild story is actually really good, and I didn't think it was. I thought it was mm-hmm. okay, but I think it's pretty good. And then to have Age of Calamity. Um, announced where it basically goes over what happened 100 years ago because my daughter keeps asking me okay he slept for 100 years what happened 100 years ago you know it's like you yeah. piece it together through the, story, through the the movie obviously but there's the idea that it's going to be completely flushed out in this hyrule warriors yeah. game is pretty that's like a really good vehicle for that uh-huh i'm pretty excited about that oh um, man so stoked i just wish it didn't come out the day after cyberpunk i know isn't is it the day after yeah it's oh, night wow. oh, it's 19th the, and 20th yep and i'm like oh shit um <laughs> i i won't have both i'll just wait on the on hyrule warriors just a little bit um yeah but i mean it's a switch game so i will probably pick it up sooner rather than waiting till i'm done with cyberpunk because i can play my switch games on the go um that's the thing is as i take my switch out on weekends i go out for a couple hours and that's exactly. all i play so that's i can't play cyberpunk there so if i have to do errands or head off um island i live on on a ferry or whatnot i always take the switch so i have something to play while waiting or waiting at the dock um so there there is a thing where i'm like oh i could get that too and it's just my it's the game i play when i'm not sitting at my computer um <laughs> right so um yeah that does that's, look cool I'm, I'm very excited about that i'm that's basically what i've been playing this week i put a little bit of time into ghost of tsushima that's basically my the night I put my daughter to sleep, that's what I play. But the last three or four nights, those nights have either been, it was the um, escape room with yeah. you all Yeah, last night. Thursday, it was Rocket League night with some of our other friends. So, I, And then Tuesday was the other night, and I had a lot of work to do, so I couldn't play then. So I really only put like half an hour into Ghost this week, and I'm just like, I'm so close to beating this fucking game. <laughs> and yeah. I just keep, my, my Ghost nights keep getting... Um, taken away yeah <laughs> for for other fun stuff obviously it's not like a yeah. really bad thing but it's just like okay i need to actually buckle down and finish this goddamn game before yeah. cyberpunk comes out it's true you, you got a while you got a you got a few months still yeah no i want to beat this game by the end of the month i want to i'm going to platinum this thing by the yeah. time this month is over so i can move on not because it's not a great game it is but yeah after you play the same game you know <laughs> for three months maybe it's time to put something else in it's true uh, so yeah that's it that's all i've been playing Ah, sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Well, lots of good news this week, and next week we're going to get a ton of... Oh, shit. This week, Friday, is um the Mario 3D All-Stars. Oh, yeah. Shit. Okay. So I won't get it on that day. I, I, I pre-ordered a Target, but it's not going to come until after release day. Yeah, so I've already it. talked about to my wife about that, and being like, that's probably one I'll pick up, actually. Like, I already know I likely will never be able to get the thing physical, because I don't have it pre-ordered now, and who knows when it will be available physical again. Um, right. Hopefully they have more physical copies made before March of next year. Um, Boy, that would be a missed opportunity if they did. But if they don't, yeah. uh, then I'll just uh, pick it up digitally sometime, probably February or March next year. I want to get it and have it. I just I don't need it now. I'm not going to play yeah. it anytime soon. So, but they they gave me a date that I know I need to buy it by that date, which right. I will do. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe it. I mean, I guess I can, but it sold out fucking quickly. Oh like yeah, I'm, it did. I jumped on. I didn't, it was not available on Amazon. So I was like, well, I, I fucking need to put a pre-order in. So I went over to target. Um, and then never checked Amazon again. I guess I, mean, yeah. I should have to see if there was something, but 
I assume I'll get it from Target. We'll see. Yeah. I, I, I would per, ideally I'd like to have it ordered in two places just in case, you know. I've got it from Target stuff from Target before, but I guess it hasn't been anything that um highly sought after. Right. So, well, good luck on that. Hopefully you get it. Well, it says my shipping label has been created. That's interesting. Oh, it's there you go. FedEx from coming from Tucson to San Diego. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. so that's something. I that's guess. promising. Okay. That's yeah, very is, promising. Yeah. That's cool. It says it's going to arrive on the 23rd of September. So that's that's fine. Yeah. I'm probably going to dive into Sunshine because that's the one I that's the one I've never touched. Galaxy yeah. I played a little bit and 64 I played about 20 times. So Yeah. Um yeah. Anyway, I'll report back I guess in a couple weeks. <laughs> yeah. All right, anything else for mm-hmm. for this week? No. I'm good. All right. All right, folks, this was episode 259 of Prof and Dev Play Games. He's at Summerspeak. I am at Prof Plays Games. Please rate us on your podcast service of choice and enjoy this week's crazy fucking news because it's going to be a good one. It is going to be a good one. Um, Can't wait. Talk to everyone tomorrow, uh, next week about it. Yep, sounds good.